as we talk about receiving new covenant blessings, covenant blessings, you know, first of all, we need to understand what does our covenant, what are our covenant privileges, provisions, and blessings. We must know what our covenant that with God, the covenant God has given to us, what is what are the provisions He has made as part of that covenant? What are the privileges that He has given to us and say, take it, this is part of my covenant with you. What are the blessings that He uh, uh, gives to us? Remember, it's all by grace, meaning this covenant that we're talking about is a covenant of grace. It is not something God is giving to us because you know you've deserved it, you've earned it. No, it's a covenant of grace. So God is saying, I'm giving this to you uh, because of my loving kindness towards you. So if we want to understand our privileges, our provision, the provisions and the blessings that God extends to us, we just have to look at the very nature of God and His Word. Let me talk about the nature of God. Uh, you know, God made a simple statement to Abraham. He said, you know, Abraham, and He made this Abrahamic covenant. He said, I will bless you. It's simply saying, all that I am, I'm making available to you through my covenant. The second aspect of us understanding uh, what provision God has made, what privileges and blessings He's made available to us uh, through the blood covenant is to know the Word of God. So the new covenant that Jesus brings to us, the eternal everlasting covenant through His own blood and His own body offered for us, Jesus is the surety of a better covenant. I want us to understand that everything that comes from God that is spoken of by His nature, that is spoken to us in His Word, is available to you and me as believers. So you as a believer, you have every quote unquote right, uh, you are ready to partake of the blessings. How do we receive our covenant blessings? Three important things are receiving covenant blessings. Number one is obedience to His Word. Number two, we need to exercise faith. And number three, we need to take it by force. So number one, obedience to God's Word. We must uh, know the Word of God, and you must live by the Word of God. If you want to receive the covenant provisions, blessings, and privileges over your life, walk in the light of God's Word. Acts 20 and verse 32, uh, the Apostle Paul tells the leaders in Ephesians, he says, I commend you to God and to the Word of His grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified by faith. You see, why is the Word of God important? The Word of God's grace so important because it is that Word that builds us up, that matures us so that we can walk in our inheritance. You see, uh, many people like to be inspired with, by the Word, but look, uh, thank God for uh, messages that inspire us, but we need messages that build us up. We need messages that disciple us, that mature us, that cause us to grow and stretch and build. Because when we grow, to that we are built up by the Word, then we can walk in our inheritance. Number two, we must exercise faith. You know, every promise of God is received by faith. Abraham walked by faith into the promise of God. When Jesus ministered to people in the Old Covenant, he responded to people who came to him in faith. They saw him, they reached out to him, and he responded to their faith. They received by faith. Even people outside the covenant, like the Roman centurion or the woman from Canaan, came and received by faith. So you and I must learn the dynamic of how to exercise faith in God. And the third thing is this, you must take it by force. You know, Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, Jesus said, from the days of John the Baptist, until now, that means it's continually given now. The kingdom of God is having is experiencing violence, and the violent taken by force. Those who are spiritually aggressive, those who are spiritually tenacious, they are the ones who take what is in the kingdom. Now, why is that? It is not because God is keeping us out of the kingdom. It's not because of that. It is because there is the flesh and the devil that are trying to keep us out of the kingdom. And it's the people who are able to contend and push past what the flesh our own flesh is doing and what the devil is doing, they are the ones that will experience the kingdom. So, you know, if you and I want to experience the kingdom, this is a nice. We've got to take it by force. So we have to contend against Satan, against our own flesh, uh, and sometimes our own thinking, our own logic that keeps us from experiencing the covenant of God. So we have to press in, take it by force.